Good day, creative spirit. We'll start our session today with a hymn from Voices United, number 679, Let There Be Light. Oh, I should mention, sorry. <laughs> Verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. 1, 2, and three. One, two, three, and six of number 679. All right, let's try this again, shall we? One more. How about 684? Make me a channel of your peace. As you can see from my poppy today, um, we are certainly heading into Remembrance Day. So this coming Sunday is Remembrance Sunday, which means then that Remembrance Day is next week. And I would like to pose a question about how do we process the destruction of war? How is it possible to even process? It always amazes me that anybody could possibly process um, having been in war, um, coming out of war, having seen it, it, yes, I just, I cannot fathom. Um, and for those that have had to process, how do, how do they go about it? How do individuals process? How do we on the outside process seeing it as well? Um, and I think that 
for perhaps individuals such as our uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, John McCrae and in writing poetry and creating in Flanders fields. Uh, that was part of his process was to be witness and have to process within himself how to deal with it. Um, and so he wrote poetry and in turn that writing of his poetry has then become something beautiful and again in turn has created something that we can then remember the atrocities and remember all that has been given and remember not to have it be repeated and the story that I'm going to read to you is about um, a, um, a rector at um, Church Christ in or Christ Church in Meaford um, and when he went off to war and how he processed and what he did by uh, saving bits and pieces of destruction and the beautiful thing that he then helped to have create and again in turn it helps us to remember remember not to have it happen again to remember all that has been given so that we may see it never happen again when the Reverend Harold Appleyard was appointed rector of Christ Church Meaford in 1938 he looked forward to a lengthy tenure he had been born in the rectory of St. George's Church, Clarksburg, and his father had been the rector both there and at Fairmount. This would be like coming home for him. However, the outbreak of war in Europe in 1939 and the terrible news of young men from me for dying overseas brought about a change of his plans. Signing up as military chaplain in 1941 with the rank of honorary captain, Appleyard soon found himself posted to an embattled southern England. The destruction appalled him. Homes, factories, and schools, and so many churches. Almost immediately, he began to collect shards of stained glass from the shattered windows of damaged churches. It is uncertain when he got the idea for the memorial windows, but his diaries reveal his intentions after only two months abroad. One night, he was on volunteer fire duty in the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. There he met Mr. G. S. Shuren, an architect appointed by the Crown with responsibility for the ancient churches of London. Mr. Shuren was enthusiastic about the young chaplain's idea and referred him to the Cox and Bernard stained glass works in Hove near Bright Brighton in Sussex. To Captain Applegard's great joy, Mr. Cox offered to design and re-led the glass to fit Christ Church Meaford, and he would do it for free of charge in gratitude to Canadians for their war efforts. As long as he was in England, he collected and carefully labeled bits of glass from scores of churches, large and small. Then when his regiment moved to the continent in 1944 in the wake of the D-Day invasion, he continued his quest in France Belgium and Holland. It was usually possible to get permission from the church to remove the bits of seemingly unusable glass, and his diaries often refer to vicars or vergers giving him pieces for the memorial windows. Sharon became so enthusiastic that he collected pieces from churches under his authority and passed them on for the Meaford windows. When the war ended in 1945, Appleyard, now a major, returned to his Meaford parish. It was a proud day for the people of Meaford when a stage was erected in front of the Meaford Town Hall for the Governor General to award the local Anglican rector the Military Cross for calm courage, disregard of his own safety and steadfastness of purpose. It was a proud day for Appleyard as well because his father, had been awarded the same medal in World War I. Then on August 11, 1946, the memorial windows were unveiled by B Mabel Randall and Winnie Hackett, two mothers in the parish who had lost sons in the war. The church was packed and the service was broadcast live on CBC radio and later in the British Isles and Europe. Today, these windows stand as a memorial to local men who paid the ultimate price of war. 
They contain many tiny pieces of colored glass from some 125 English and Welsh churches, as well as few from Ireland, France, Belgium, and Holland. With shards as old as 700 years or more, they are among the oldest glass on this continent. I encourage you at some point when this pandemic is over, or possibly, I haven't checked actually, but possibly even right now that maybe um, those windows are currently available to the public to view. Uh, Pre-pandemic, you could go to Christ Church, um, Anglican Church in Meaford, and, um, and see those amazing windows. And they are stunning. I have seen them. Um, and they do have write-ups about um, each and every window and where those pieces came from. And if you um, Google, actually, um, the uh, Meaford windows, uh, and you will, and I'll leave a link in the YouTube video to the site that actually has photos. Um, you can certainly go to Christ Church uh, website, and their church website certainly has pictures of the, of the windows. Um, but the Memorial Windows website itself has this amazing um, magnifying option where you can see every little piece of, of, of glass and to think of all of the places that they have come to create these magnificent bits of beauty from such destruction. Uh, I'd like to now take a moment in prayer for a prayer for people of courage. We offer to you, O God, our prayers for those who seek justice and resist evil. We pray for those who need your presence and strength to stand firm, for those who oppose the use of violence in any form in faithful response to the Prince of Peace. We pray for those who are prepared to be firm to protect those in danger. We pray for those who walk with others who need strength. We pray for those who protest those who organize letter campaigns, those who give sacrificially on behalf of others. We pray for those who speak the unpopular truth, who protect the unpopular victims, who choose the unpopular path of peace. We pray for those who do not let their desire for peace hinder the requirements of justice and for those who do not let their zeal for justice override the call for peace. Amen. And I, I thank the Reverend Dr. Neil Parker for that prayer from the United Church of Canada. That question of how do we um, see destruction and how do we, what do, how do we process it? Um, and I said that, you know, Individuals like Lieutenant Colonel uh, John McRae wrote poetry, and um, and our, our our dear Reverend Appleyard took that destruction and and had it saved and had amazing memorial windows created out of it. Um, but the for us, um, a lot of us, we pray. And one of the things that we do, of course, at Creative Spirit here, is create as our spiritual or prayer practice. And so we are going to be creating today poppies. And much like the um, uh, a couple weeks ago we did the negative space um, piece, this again is a negative space painting technique uh, where we fill in our piece with thoughts and, and patterns and colors and then we create the outlines of poppies and then we paint in the negative space with the black. And the poppy, I have to, I have to read something. Um, this was from, actually this is from the uh, Flanders Fields, www.flandersfields.be um, in Belgium. Um, and this um, Belgium website, thankfully, of course, was um, was uh, translated, and I love the fact that it says, "For the poppy has many aspects. It is irrepressible, 
yet ephemeral, wilting but also uplifting. It is a vulnerable flower on the borderline between ode and elegy. From a cray, the poppy kept alive the memory of a young generation that was nipped in the bud before it could bloom. I think that's just so lovely because oftentimes we, I mean, we all wear the poppies. Oh, sorry about that. We all wear the poppies. Um, but um, painting the poppies is, it, it's about how we feel, right? And so sometimes it's difficult. This might for some be far too dark and, um, and depressing and others it might be, you know, the, the full embodiment of how they feel. Um, so we're going to paint today. We're going to paint how we feel. We are going to paint um, how we deal with this process um, because so many of us, thankfully, have never experienced war. And when, so when we see the destruction um, through archived photographs and archived film um, or are told the stories by those who have witnessed it, um, and it moves us, but we still have to process that. And so part of what we do, like I say, is create. For prayer and uh, so today you will need and we are using a set of watercolor paper now if all you have is watercolor paper that's fine but today I'm using actually acrylic paper um, and I've for this particular this again is 9 by 12 acrylic paper and for today's examples I'll just be I cut it in half um, and then you will need acrylic paints and again it could be the um, you know, the student grade or the artist grade, the medium bodied in the tubes, um, the more uh, fluid bodied, um, like the craft type paint, um, whatever you happen to have, a paint palette. And in this case, again, like I showed you last week, it's just my little milk carton. Uh, um, a makeup sponge is helpful in this particular case. A couple brushes, a flat, um, a small flat, you, you may want a small round as well um, for helping out with getting around the detailing. Um, a pencil, a pencil, yes. Um, in this case though, I'm going to suggest that if you happen to have chalk, plain old, good old white chalk, um, instead of a pencil, this is going to be your friend. If you don't have chalk and you might happen to have a white watercolor pencil, that also will be great. Um, this is far better than a, a, a pencil. Um, but if you have a pencil, that's all right. You can work with it. Um, and again, a couple Sharpies, either an ultra fine or fine. And if you happen to have a waterproof um, a metallic marker, this would also be a great idea as well. And of course, sorry, our painter's tape. So let's just, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tape down our piece here. I like those finished off borders. And it just helps with um, keeping everything nice and clean. Now you'll notice with the acrylic paper over the watercolor, if you happen to have it, um, that your paint moves a, um, a little more easily than it did on the watercolor paper. All right, which is which is a nice thing. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do um, is do the what they call the underpainting, and I'm going to use a flat brush, uh, just a flat brush, and uh, I'm going to wet it a bit with some water, take off the excess, and then I'm just going to do sort of blocks of color. Okay, I'm just going to take a little. And it doesn't necessarily have to be blocks, I'm just saying blocks because that's just might be easy for um, in, the, in the mind to sort of comprehend. And in this particular case, because we're sort of, I prefer, just dip it in the water again. If you find that it stops moving, it's a little water, well, get it moving again. Um, I'm just, I'm not even, yes, I know, I didn't even clean my brush between those colors. Um, and part of the reason is that because I just, I want the colors to sort of blend in. Um, a little more water. And there we go. Let's smooth that out. And then if I could continue on with the blocks or I could just sort of randomly do it on the paper, right? 
and you can see some of the color mixing within because I didn't I didn't clean my brush right um, a little purple just because mixed in with the red and just light brush strokes uh, where the two colors meet help to sort of blend those colors And a wide variety of reds. So I've got some bright reds, I've got some purplish reds, I've got sort of like the wines or the burgundy colors, I've got some terracotta color happening here, um, I've got like I say some purple, right, and just fill that color up and even some lighter sections too. Go ahead and do that. All right, so it's just a mix of, and there we have that. Now, just again, the excess before you clean your, right, because you'll always have to clean your brushes, soap and water, um, gently, a little, uh, you know, lukewarm water. Um, but I always like to make sure that you don't let paint dry in them while you're sitting because once it's dry in your brushes, acrylic paint, very difficult uh, to get it out. So now this, I have this pattern of color or this mash of color. I'm going to take my brush or my sponge um, and I want to add some highlights. So I'm going to wet it a bit, squeeze out the excess water. Um, you can see it had paint in it because my fingers are all red now. And you can go ahead and add some other colors. Um, you know, think about, I mean, there's some green. I'm just going to dab some green in because I may, you know, with poppies, there might be sections where I might want leaves. I may not, but it's okay to have a little green in there as well. Um, or maybe I want a little of that yellow mixed in with some of the terracotta so it's not quite so bright, but add some other little sections of highlight. And again, just sort of taking the harshness away from the obvious lines of, of um, various colors. And you could do some splatter in here too, if that's what you'd like. I kind of like the looks of that. All right. So once you have that, and I'm just going to lift this up. I'm not taking the tape off. No, I can't. So there we have. And you could actually, I mean, you could add, if you had gold paint too, you could go ahead and add some, some gold in there if you'd like. Um, once that is dry, and it won't take long, a uh, few minutes, and that'll be dry. Um, once it's dry, and the tape would normally not have been taken off yet. <laughs> but I'm recycling art here. Um, once it's dry, then you can go ahead and you can add words. Uh, you could add feelings, how you, things that symbolize to you remembrance, things that symbolize to you um, your, your gratitude, your um, thankfulness, your um, fear perhaps, um, or if you want to stick to, uh, you know, Remembrance Day, and it's and as as we grew up in its pure form, um, perhaps the text from In Flanders Fields. You could um, write words down. Um, and again, you know this idea that that the poppies were were partly a hope. Um, and I love again that description in this um, bit from Flanders Fields about the fact that they, you know, the wilting, right? The the idea that some of those buds they they wilt before they bloom that wilting and they're uplifting and um, and so maybe there are words that you would like to add that are also um, like I say maybe maybe there's some fear that you want to put down but then there's that hope as well um, and you could write in you could actually you could do the whole poem if you wanted um, and you could absolutely just do it and do it in some finer ink Just 
just the crease and and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to go all the way across it could absolutely you could decide to um, you know turn it another direction and and um, write in you know continue to write in and maybe part of that hopefulness um, so I've got in here Flanders Fields you know we are the the dead but the hopefulness side I've got a gold metallic marker um, and I could put in here um, loved and worthy. And words can cross over one another. Um, you know, marks I bravely sing. And don't worry if you accidentally spell something incorrectly or you write it and you're like, ah, oh, where's my white out? You can always paint over top of it, right? Um, not everything is going to be shown in here, right? So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and let's see. Um, maybe we want crosses with the word crosses in here as well. So you can put whatever words you would like in it and on it. Okay. So once you've got that, then you take a look at it and see where some of the colors are. Again, you could add more on top of it so that the words, maybe you don't want words completely screaming out at you. Um, so like I say, you could always add a little, I like gold. I'm a, I, it's the shiny, right? Shiny, sparkly. I know. Um, just going to take a little gold here and I'm just going to, with my sponge, my makeup sponge, and I'm just going ahead and picking a few places that maybe I don't want to be quite so pronounced or maybe more pronounced, I suppose, depending on how you look at the, the gold. Um, and then, and if, like I say, splatters. Splatters are a lot of fun. So go ahead and take, um, take your paint, take your brush, load your brush with water. So when you dip it in, don't scrape it off the side of the jar, right? Don't do this. Just make sure you've got, you shake off a little bit of the drip. Load it up with some paint and then do this and it will splatter. And I can tell you by the amount of splatter that I had to clean up from the kitchen counter uh, that it splatters good and far. <laughs> so make sure that you have some paper. The, the, the green thing, the, the green mat here did not uh, cover up nearly enough of my splatter area. <laughs> so there's a heads up for you. All right, sorry mom. Um, now, once this, once you have this, next comes uh, the chalk and outline of your, the outline of your outlining of your poppies and the beautiful thing about chalk is that it is easily removable now I forgot to bring a q-tip but a damp q-tip erases so once this is dry remember this will not be reactivated by water so a damp q-tip is perfect for cleaning up a chalk line now if you don't have a q-tip then I will show you on a dry spot here somewhere. Um, if I were to, when I'm doing my outlining of my poppy, right, and I thought, oh, that's not how I wanted that to go, and I'm hoping that you can see this, then even just a damp cloth, it doesn't have to be soaking wet, just damp, and look at that. No paint, but takes the chalk right off. Carolyn will never know. Did she try to do it all? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yes, go ahead and do your outlines. And you could have, 
and you know use the hold the chalk lightly and just it is it is really not about these are you know shapes that you're if you're they may or may not to you at the moment look like much of a poppy but think of sort of the front side of one or maybe a side view um, let's see maybe a side view how's that going to look maybe like a side view like that and then I found um, that where you might want a stem it's just easy to go ahead and give yourself a little line with the chalk um, don't try and do both sides of it because you can do that easily with the paint just give yourself at least an acknowledgement of where that line is going to be right and then and you could do some of the droopy little blooms blossoms right with a droopy stem and maybe give yourself some idea of where a leaf may happen and then take your paint take a small brush and with your black paint now I say black because it's it's the most obvious for the negative space right um, you may find that you uh, depending on how dark uh, your underpainting is that um, maybe you want it Maybe this is not hopeful enough for you. Maybe this is really too depressing. And so you want to um, surround your, you want to trace out your negative space in a brighter color, maybe a brighter red, or um, maybe some yellows, maybe some orangey yellows, right? Sort of a sunsetty glow or a sunrise glow with a hope sunrise um, instead of the black. That is absolutely okay to do. Um, and an experiment. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, take your, your piece and experiment on like we've already done, but I mean, um, take a look at the colors and take a scrap piece of paper beside and, and paint some other colors solid and go, you know, I think that would, I think that particular yellow or that orange or that lighter red um, would be great. And, and then do your negative space in that instead of the black. That's fine too, or do it in a burgundy or maybe a purple or something. Um, and then on the edge, um, instead of going the black all the way to the, to the tape, like we did with our previous negative space pieces where we had sort of like the window pane and the leaves, um, I decided that for whatever reason, just because I was going to try it and see, um, that I didn't go all the way to the tape, right? So I just sort of stopped and some of it is a little bit of a harsh line where I stopped, but then I just took some more paint, black paint with the makeup sponge again and, and, and sponged some of it around just to sort of soften the edge a bit. So then we still had some of the red underpainting still showing through. Um, and that, for the most part, is that, that's the process. And... Um, yeah, I don't think, um, so like I say, do it in the chalk. Once you, when you take your um, uh, small paintbrush and you go around the lines, you can either go right on the chalk or inside or just outside of the chalk, whichever. But if there's any place that, again, that has the white showing through, trace all of your, do all of your black outlining first before you start erasing any lines. Okay, because you want to make sure that that black paint is, is dry. And then, like I said, take a, a damp Q-tip or just the corner of a damp rag and it'll just erase that easily. It's really quite amazing. So um, to that, let's recenter. Um, and I, just before we recenter, I want to say too that, that while you're doing this, I often forget to mention that playing music is a lovely way to help you in that moment as well. I know that uh, doing this spiritual practice can be, especially when we're at home, it was a lot easier when we were meeting together, right? And, and that time was, you had that amount of time to do it in. Um, at home, there's a lot of 
distractions and there's a lot of places where our minds are being pulled and so to help with that focus to allow ourselves to embrace this process um, don't forget to try and play some music as well some music that you love some music that calms or music that inspires um, but go ahead and play some music because that really it really does make a difference and so let us go ahead and recenter, and of course with some breathing exercises. So just go ahead and put your feet flat on the floor and your back straight to get those full, deep breaths. And our first breath in, and I want you to think about breathing in the love of God and sending that love back out into the world and breathing in the love of God and sending that calming love back out into the world and breathing in the love of God and sending that understanding love back out into the world and together we say creator God quiet my mind before it passes judgment on this prayer my gift of time to you Amen. And so while well, in this process, may you find the ability to think upon this Remembrance Day with some, an open heart um, and to embrace how you might deal with that, um, sent that, that, that destruction and what we can turn into it through our prayers, through our prayer practices, um, turning it into some beauty, some healing, and that we never forget. Until next week, may you have a safe, uh, a safe and calming week.